Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have got a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Cyclin Bat. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. All right, when you first open it, you have your uh, post bolts. It looks like we have two different types of sets. We have, looks like maybe half inch and then one inch bolts. And then we also have lock washers and washers included. Here's the battery and right off the bat, I can tell you that this thing is pretty small for being a 100 amp hour battery. You also get a, uh, I wanna say a small user's manual product manual and a warranty card for up to five years. So that's pretty good, five year warranty for this battery. Okay, and this battery does come, like I said, with two different types of uh, terminal bolts. One is uh, 1.18 inches, that'd be 30 millimeters in length. And the other one is 0.67 inches in length, which is 17 millimeters. And the documentation does say that these are seven millimeter bolts but I compared it with this eight millimeter bolt and they're the exact same size. So I don't know where they're getting seven millimeter from. I don't know if that's misdocumentation, but this eight millimeter fits in here just fine. Okay, the dimensions of this battery, it is nine inches across, which is about 229 millimeters. It's 8.19 inches tall, which is 208 millimeters and then the depth is 5.43 inches in depth which is 138 millimeters and the weight is right at 20 pounds okay some of the specifics about this battery uh, like I said it's a 12.8 volt uh, the charging voltage is 14.4 uh, give or take 0.2 volts uh, and the discharge voltage is 10.4. So that's when the battery will actually shut itself off. Uh, when it comes to the BMS in this battery, it is actually 150 amp BMS. So that means that you can continuously discharge and charge this battery at 150 amps. That's pretty impressive for this small of a form factor. And it says that it can do a peak discharge of 300 amps for five seconds. And actually I'm mistaken, the low voltage protection is actually 10 volts. That's when the battery will shut off. Uh, overcharge protection is 14.6 volts. So it won't go over 14.6. And the overcurrent protection is 360 amps. So we'll be testing that in a little bit. All right, the next thing you should do with your battery as soon as you open it and read over the manual to see what the specifications are, you should test the voltage of your battery to make sure that it is in the range um, of between 13.1 and 13.2. That is where you want it. You don't want it at 13.8. And when it comes to voltage, you don't want 13.8 volts um, or higher. And you also don't want your battery to be shipped and it's uh, you know like at 12 volts because that is just too low. Your battery should be shipped to you between 50 and 70% which is right around that sweet spot of 13.1 to 13.2. So let's go ahead and test it. Okay, and this battery came in at 13.19, so that is perfect. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is charge this battery all the way up to 100%, and then I'm gonna perform a capacity test to make sure that we're getting the 100 amp hours that we paid for. Okay, so the discharge test is now completed, so let's go ahead and look at the results. And as you can see, we ended up with 103.29 amp hours in that battery. So it's definitely got the capacity. So let's go ahead and put it to the test when it comes to the amperage. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to a 5,000 watt inverter and we will run some high amperage tests to make sure that it can run them and to see if it will shut off due to the high amperage protections that supposedly the BMS has. So let's go ahead and get that all set up. Okay, so here is my setup for the high amperage test. What I have is a griddle. I have my um, new wave induction uh, cooktop right here, and I have a heat gun. So we're gonna be setting those so we get about 150 amps. Okay, we got our timer set, so let's go ahead and get it up to 150 amps. Okay, let's set our timer. 
and let's turn on the new wave at 900 watts which I forgot to set up my uh, amp meter my amp clamp so uh, it's still running but we're running at 80 amps right now so let's go ahead kick on our heater to low and that's giving us 137 amps and I've got a little 200 watt heater right here so let's plug that in that way it bumps it up to that 150 amps we are now looking at 150 160 but it will drop back down once this heater uh, gets to temperature see there it goes it's starting to drop back down so it might actually sit at around 160 amps okay but it's already been running for two minutes and 40 seconds so we'll let it run you know until about seven or eight minutes just to make sure it can run the 160 amps with no problem okay well it's been running this test for seven and a half minutes now at 156 amps and let's go ahead and take a look at the thermal to see what the battery looks like okay there we go and you can see that all the wiring and the top of the battery is red but look at the temperatures the top of the battery is 105 degrees Fahrenheit and these cables I mean these cables are I mean they're room temperature I mean my hand is you know 90 is my hand is 90 degrees so these cables are body temperature so the, the top of the case well it's now 115 degrees so it is warming up right here but look at these connections these connections are not hot at all which is amazing so you can definitely tell where the BMS is right here all right, we're gonna go ahead and stop this and let it cool down for about five or 10 minutes. And then we're gonna do a 300 amp test to see if it will stay on for longer than five seconds. Um, and if it does, that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, it's amazing that it would be able to pull that, but it really shouldn't keep that for longer than five or 10 seconds. And then after that, we'll go ahead and do that uh, big, huge amp surge to see if it can actually power my shop smith. Okay. Uh, well, I've given it about five or ten minutes to kind of cool down a little bit But what we're gonna do is a high amperage test and I, what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna push all these things on high. I don't know how many amps it's actually gonna give me But let's just start turning everything on. Let's go Okay, that says 350 amps. Let's put this on low. There we go. And it shows 294 amps right now is what's being pulled from this battery. Now it shouldn't, it shouldn't pull that for this long. It should only pull this for about five seconds. It's already at 20 seconds. I mean, let's go ahead and just kick this on high. Our amperage is now 340 amps and we'll just let this run for a little bit remember it really should only pull this amperage it it should only pull this amperage for five seconds and then shut off the inverter says that the battery voltage is 10.9 right now so I'm surprised that it hasn't started beeping yet Amperage is at 340. Yeah, I mean, it's been over a minute, minute 15. I don't like the fact that it's not turning off. So let's go ahead and stop this. Okay, I let this battery cool down a little bit. It's been about five minutes. I went ahead and put away everything on my table and I plugged in my shopsmith over here. Now this thing is a beast. Uh, I've never had a 12 volt battery be able to power this maybe uh, actually I think I had a, a Sun fun kits battery be able to do it but it was a 275 amp hour battery so um, but without further ado let's just go ahead and turn it on see what happens I've got my amp meter set up over here uh, to capture the maximum amperage so let's go ahead and see if it starts Oh, 
Oh my God. That, that's incredible. And can you believe it? For some reason, my amp meter did not capture that. So I'm gonna set it up again. That is seriously unbelievable. And this captured 368 amps. Uh, that's, I, I, that's amazing. That amazes me. This battery, it can, it can really throw out the power. Okay, I'm now to the point where I'm kind of wondering what is going to shut this battery down. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on this heat gun, which is going to give it an initial thousand watts, you know, probably 90, 100 amps. And then I'm going to turn on this shopsmith and see what happens. So let's do it. Okay, we maxed out at 103 amps right there. So let's turn on the shopsmith. Unbelievable. It, it overloaded my, my clamp meter. It overloaded my amp meter. Wow. Okay, so what are my thoughts on the Cyclin Bat 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery? Well, uh, you know what? I like it. Even though it just pushes the amps and it doesn't care and it could possibly be a fire hazard, but you really have to enjoy that. Uh, it's a group 24 battery, so it's like a drop-in replacement for your RVs. And this thing, well, first of all, it has 103 amp hours, so it passes the capacity test. You know, it doesn't have any bells or whistles. It's just a battery. It's, it doesn't have Bluetooth. Um, it doesn't have cold temperature protection. It doesn't have heaters built in, uh, anything like that. But if you need raw power, this thing will deliver. It overloaded my 400 amp clamp meter. And I, and I don't know how else to describe that. That's ridiculous. It's the first time that anything that is a 12 volt, 100 amp variety has powered my shopsmith. And it didn't only do that, but it powered my shopsmith with 107 amps, or maybe 103 amps, whatever, already being pulled from the battery. So, I mean, that's just dumb is what that is. Unbelievable power this battery can produce. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the Cyclin Bat Lithium Iron Phosphate 12.8 volt 100 amp hour battery, please leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this in my description if you want to look into it further. Again, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.